Well, hi everybody, welcome to Kathy Loves to Scrap. Today we're going to look at a video of a layout that I've created for the Mystical Scrap Chat group for their Retro TV Shows competition. This week was a, a Brady Bunch grid style. We had to use a colouring palette of blue, um, pattern paper and a doily from the pack. This is the layout I created and I'm going to share with you how I did it. I used the uniquely creative kit paper of Summer Breezes and this is the paper I'm using for my pattern paper and you'll see how I've built that into the layout as we go. Alright, as always I like to um, incorporate different techniques and so today I'm going to incorporate um, my favourite of watercolour that I'm going to build a background with and that's what I'm using on the white. And I have blue, which I will do. These ones I fussy cut out of the paper because they'll become my corner elements. There's my doily that I'm required to have from the kit. Another part that I will fussy cut out of the corner of the paper so that it adds to my elements. I've chosen my two photos. This one here is of uh, Warilla Beach and myself there, favourite beach that I go to. Um, it brings back childhood memories. <clears throat> so... I always like to start with a sketch and that I created myself. So here we go. Today I have got the shades blue in the grid there and I've got my grid there. I have my extra photo added. So that's the photo that I'm going to use for the grid. And this one here is my extra photo that I'm adding to the page. I'm also going to watercolour this background and I'm going to build it like the ocean scene from my photo and I'm using watercolours just an ordinary palette and then down the bottom here is where I'm going to put my pattern paper and I'm going to show you how I'm going to use this paper both sides to build the bottom part of the page so we're then going to start now I have white cardstock which I will use and I probably should have got a watercolour board but I'm not, I'm just using Kaiser Craft white board to work with. So I'm going to use my watercolours. I've already marked in um, where I want my borders and I want my paints to be. I use my photo here to do that. I've used a pencil to mark in the grid lines and I can draw on my horizon line, the wave line, so that I can get a rough idea of the colouring that I want to put into my picture. I've drawn where I want to paint to and over here on the side I've marked in the island because I need to build all in behind so that the photo when it sits on there looks like it belongs as part of the image. So first of all I, only ha I just use my watercolour palette, as you can see, that I love using. And I am going to take my photo, and now I have the island here, so I have to build that section so when the photo sits there, it blends in with the photo. To do that, I'm going to need to build around the picture, but I want it so that it sort of blends. Now, it's not going to be perfect, obviously, for the colours, so I use it. And I'm going to use the brown, which are the parts of the island to start with, and I'm going to build in the space here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Watercolours are great. You can add and build by layering up the colours. I'm going to add in the green grass, which is at the top of the island there. Wingdang Island is an important part of my childhood, part and part of my life. And this day that we went there this year, it was clear and we were able to get right through around to the other side, which has not been possible for a long, long time for me. I'm building up my island so that my shades can blend and I just clean my brush each time that I'm going to use a new colour. Now I'm going to work on the skyline and skyline is, as we know, a shade of blue. So I'm putting in lots of water to actually already dampen the page and allow an equal smooth um, spreading of the blue. <clears throat> this is important to get the effect of a whitewashed sky because we know that our skies in here in Australia are always whitewashed blue, they're not a straight simple blue, particularly along the coastline when it blends with the ocean. And so I'm layering up my blue 
doesn't have to be perfect, sky's not perfect, colour's not perfect, we're going to layer it up. And that's the best part about watercolours, you can just build it from nothing and then you can spread more colour. And the way you build it up is by building more water into it and the more water you add, the thinner the colour and the easier to spread. Now I could have used a bigger brush but I wanted a bit of control with my brush so I've kept a small brush made the project probably a little bit longer to do but as you can see the sky is now starting to fall by spreading it with water I'm filling in on those gaps where the, wa the watercolour is now covering over the page and I've now started to put in my skyline and white patches in the sky give it a bit of differentiation and make it look a little bit more authentic as you can see like my photograph here I have got my island part put in where it will mix and my sky is a bit differentiated. I'm going to add in now some darker blue which will become my horizon of my ocean. <clears throat> okay so when it's in the distance it looks dark and so that's why I'm using the darker blue and I'm going to build that up because I don't need it to be just one solid block. So I'm now going to play building in my blues, blending them in to build my ocean and I'm going to add lots of water and I'm going to play with the blues and I'm going to spread it down my page. So I now have my ocean coming in and you can see my lines and my waves already in there as well. I haven't defined it totally but I'm layering up my blues like the ocean which are shades of blue which ties in with the theme of the page and I'm adding it in. So you can see how the ocean is slowly coming together. Now I'm going to put in white. I'm going to add white in. And the reason I add white in is going to fill the gaps and it allows it to give it that smooth uh, water transparency while giving the blues a little bit of a blend. I'm going to go back with that dark blue again because I want that horizon to be really full. Now I'm going to put in my waves and the way I'm putting those in is by putting a lot more with the white and they look like your wave tips where the waves are crashing in on themselves. And I'm just adding that in doesn't have to be. Now I know that a lot of this is going to get covered up with my photos but just trying to build it a little bit authentically so that what does show looks real. Adding white up the top here to define the clouds, the wispy clouds in the sky. Also blending in the white so that you can see. And my painting is coming together nicely just using a little bit more blue to build a different colour that I'm going to put in as the underside of the clouds and I'm going to use my finger to blend that in so that it's a smooth finish. Next I'm going to load in some more white because white caps it off and now I'm really going to just add in some splatters like sea foam as it comes from there. You do that by adding lots of water to the white. Now you can see I have my picture. I'm just put in down here, which I've missed the edge here, add in. So now when I place the picture, the edges of the page are complete. Just added a few more splatters just to make it stand out a bit more. And you can see. I'll put that to the side now to dry. And now I've got my blue piece of cardstock that I'm going to use. And I'm going to cut out the internal centre because I always like to use the card to the best of its ability. I use a three quarter inch frame all the way around so that I have um, a solid edge to my page. I like to finish my pages with a solid edge and then I'll use the blue square in the middle to grid my photo to mount the other photo and to use it as elements on the page. Taking that out, <clears throat> which is really important, and I'm going to put the frame to the side till the page dries. Now, as you can see, this is what I'm going to mount my photos on, so I'm just making sure that it fits and they both fit on there quite nicely and I've got space to move. 
So I'm now going to prepare my photo, which I do prior to cutting it because it makes it that much smoother. So I'm going to tape up the photo, just put rows and rows of tape across so that it all goes together prior to cutting. It's important that that happens so that I have my page. Then I've measured it and it's a 7 by 5 photo. So I need to cut it at about 1 and 3 quarters to get even squares. So 1 and 3 quarters by 1 and 3 quarters roughly to give it an even spacing. When I lay it down, I put up my first lot of grid to make sure that it fits and it's straight and I build my grid by putting the layers in one at a time and that way I have it evenly spaced and I have it straight and I don't lose pieces of my photo which is hard sometimes and I have done in the past. I'm now going to trim it down and what I use is the edge of the internal ruler to make sure that I trim it exactly the same distance all the way around. Once again, the inside part of the ruler to trim it, slide it up, make sure it's straight. And now I have mine. And I can just see this edge is not perfectly straight. So I'm going to just trim it a little bit so that I have a neat edge. Now it's not straight because when I cut out the centre, it obviously was a little bit off. Now I have my gridded photo. I'm now going to mount my next photo and once again you know I'm very uh, frugal with my card so I know that this card that photo is a 6x4 so I'm going to cut it at 6 and an eighth by 4 and an eighth so then I've just got a thin border because I don't like chunky borders around my photos and then also going to, you can see that it just gives it a little bit of a pop. I'm going to cut out the centre again because I'm going to need that for elements I'm sure throughout the rest of it because as I go I work I have a plan and as you saw I'm going to need some blue in there to pop some things so I'll take that out now I'm going to mount this photo by taping the edges and because it is a smaller photo and because it is going to go onto um, the wet, well it won't be wet, it'll be dry but my watercolour part of the page, I need it to be done solidly. Not exactly straight there so I'm just going to fix it, realign it to make sure that it's carefully matched. It's a little bit thick on that side, it's thicker than I like, I'm just going to trim it down. Okay, so I now have my two photos done. They have my grid one and my plain one. The grid one still needs a little bit more to come up off the page, I think, so I'm just going to quickly mount it on some white cardstock. And yes, when you do a shade of one colour, a monochromatic design, you can add the basics like white or craft or black so I'm use white here just to give it that extra pop. Now I have got that. Now I'm going to build the bottom part of the page which requires me to tear it like waves. So I'm just going to tear them and I have gone a bit fast here for you because that's nothing worse. That's going to fill in this space here at the bottom of my picture, my painting um, and it has got a slope so that's what I need to work with. But as you can see, my artwork is now dry. I'm going to take the first edge because it's got the straight edge at the bottom. And that's what I'm going to work with from the top. So that straight edge along the bottom is the straight edge of the page. And I'm now going to um, distress the edges a little bit. Sorry about the mess. I'm a bit of a messy scrapper. <clears throat> and... I'm using the Salty Ocean Distressing from Tim Holtz and my dauber here and I just quickly daub the edge of it to give some more blue like the waves and add the depth of the ocean, the movement of the water 
and that comes through with colouring here. I'm now going to tape on the back so I can build it to the height that I want it to be. One strip is enough. Taking that yeah, manoeuvrability of the paper that way into account. Now I'm going to use the zigzag pattern like waves. Waves are a bit zigzaggy and that's giving that movement of water as well. And that's really important because the whole theme is um, a beach theme and this is projecting the waves moving. And I'm going to build this part up slowly for you. As you can see, each one, I'm going to add a little edge to it by inking the edges. And it's really important. So don't always because the white of the white caps. And I'm putting it all together, inking down the edges. And as you can see, my page is slowly building. And I'm getting to here, which I've now worked and put into the edge. Top that off. I have a bit of white in there with a white cap still. Now, this is the last part, so I'm just going to edge this one. Doesn't matter that it runs over the page because I'm going to trim that in a moment. I'm going to now fix this part in there permanently. And you can see that I've now used my cut patterns paper, which is a requirement of the challenge. And I've got multiple shades of blue, so I think I've met that component. Now that I've done this, I'm going to add the inner part of my page to my outer frame. And I make sure I tape each of the edges so that it's a flat finish and it doesn't stick up or come apart. And you can use whatever adhesive you use. I use double sided tape. I'm from years, years of using double sided tape. Before I move it on, at the beach we always have our uh, flocks of seagulls so I'm going to add a seagull stamp here. I'm using Memento Archival Ink and I'm just going to ink it using my Tim Holtz stamp hat, um, platform which is really really helpful. <clears throat> allows me to do multiple layering of a stamps and get it correct. I'm then going to adhere it to the frame so I now have a solid up. So you can see my seagulls in there, my sea foam. Now I'm going to add in my photo so I can work the rest of the page. And there goes in my gridded main photo with mine. And this one here, because it is on the water colour, I've added extra tape to make sure it stays because it's going across multiple surfaces here. So I've now placed it. Now I'm going to play with the elements. And this is the fun part where you get to build it up and you trick it. And the reason I'm laying this down is because I want to do my title, which is another grid on the page. I've pre-cut these from uh, using my Cricut and using Life's a Beach uh, cartridge. Yes, I have an old Cricut expression, which I need to upgrade, but I still love this machine. Um, I now have the title, which I'm gridding into place, and I've used a Xyron in Using my ruler, I'm now going to mark in my stitching lines. Every half centimetre across, I've put a dot, and I'm using my eye to just line up with my vertical lines so that I now have a grid. Using my awl, I go through and put on my holes first because that's really important because it makes the sewing that much easier. Now you can see that my hand is in a wrap. That's because I done some tendon damage which is going to make sewing fun because I usually sew with my left hand. Today I'm going to have to do my right hand. I use my needle threader and I have some embroidery floss here. Normally I would use three strands but today for this because I want it more softer I'm going to just use two strands. So I separate my two strands which can be easy sometimes and more difficult at other times. I chose a lighter blue because I didn't want it to be overpowering. So take my two strands and I separate them from the main thread and at the bottom you can see it's getting a little bit tangled, that's alright, I'll just pull it apart and I'll break it apart, it's okay, get the other sides together so I don't lose them, take that off, 
and now I have my two threads. Using my two threads, oh dear, I've got ink all over my hands. Anyway, I'll clean that up in a minute. So I'm going to thread my needle using my threader because I'm getting old and can't see. And I'm hopeless at sewing. It's the one skill I'm very, very slack in. <laughs> Not that it's the best. And now I'm using my other hand that I normally sew, can sew with. So when I've got my thread threaded, I put a knot into the end. I always knot the end of mine. Other people don't. They tape it or they adhere it to the back. I like to put a knot like old school, being a cross stitcher, I put it in. So I'm going to start stitching and I'm going to decide I'm going to do a day uh, like a, a chain stitch today. So I go in through the first hole and I do that twice. So I go up to the second hole, come back again through that bottom hole again because it's important that I have the two threads because to make the chain you need the two threads. Then I go up to the next hole above. I'm going to rub out the hole mark so that I don't actually um, dirty the thread. Sometimes going through the, the hard lead pencil, it leaves some marks on the thread. So I'll just quickly clean up my page. And that's the important part about lead pencil. You can clean it up, rip out the rubber. Right. I'm now going to continue sewing, going up to the next line. And I'm really sorry I'm off camera a bit, <coughs> not realising that I am. I'm going to do the thing, apologise for my children in the background calling out. If you can hear them, they don't realise they need to be quiet. All right, and I'm going to slip, slit it in through the two parts there to build my chain. And that's really, really important because we want it to all build together. And I'm going to continue sewing so that I finish the whole grid. And as you can see, I'm going in behind, pulling it out, going in through the two loops to get my chain effect, and then going back into the same hole. And that allows me to build my chain stitch across my page and I am working. Sorry, my children can't help themselves. They like to just interrupt. And I'm sewing in. And I'm really sorry about that interruption. Getting herself ready to work, my youngest daughter. And I'm going to pull the thread through. And I'll continue sewing now. All the way up and as you can see the chain will slowly build and using my other hand is a little bit more difficult for me because I really do need to go behind to look normally I can just sew it straight through but using my other hand makes it a bit more difficult and a little bit more awkward so I now have my chain stitch starting and I've gone ahead and done it all for you because you don't really want to see me stitch at all now I'm going to use a blue uh, gel pen to outline my title letters just to make them pop off the page a little bit. Oh dear, background noises for you. That would be somebody on a motorbike who shouldn't be. Oh, and here comes a now noisy car, but that's okay. <clears throat> so as you can see, my title, Shades of Blue, is starting to pop off the page. Because I've now outlined it and you can actually see that it's sitting there shades of blue. Now I've got some cheesecloth here because I thought I'd like to add a little bit of dimension to the page and also some texture and I'm going to build the elements of the page. So these are the fussy cut pieces and the doily of the requirements. So I'm adding those in and I'm putting in my cheesecloth behind just to give that extra texture to it and I'm going to glue it down with my tacky glue which I love using my tacky glue and it is also archival safe so that's a good advantage for scrapbooking. Here we go putting the cheesecloth behind that one. Now this doily I knew I needed to trim down to fit the hind because I'd already done my measuring 
and I'm going to add in my cheesecloth all in one go there. So now I have that there. I've got this strip from an old Kaiser piece of paper, the Beach Shack, and it's got the quote on it, and the quote says, Find me under the palm trees and near the ocean breeze. And I think that just ties it off nicely. It too is in the blues, which is great because it's my shades. Now I'm using a punch to create my leaf clusters because I like to build and layer it up. And I've taken all my blue flowers from all my different sources and I'm slowly building up. Now I always plan where I'm going to put it first because I need some more leaves there because I want it to be balanced and I don't want it to be something. So using my glue, popping it into place. It's a bit of thing. And I'm sorry that the bottom is off screen at the moment, but I'll be able to show you the end. You know what I'm doing. I'm gluing down my pieces, my flowers first. Then I play up here, put in my uh, phrase, and I'm just do a little play first to make sure I've got it in the right spot. Now I'm going to go back to where I originally had it. That's important. So balance it out. Yep, need one more leaf there to finish that off. All right, so now that I've got my flowers and everything, I'm going to put in where it was. And on the back, because I'm not journaling on the front, I always put my journaling to the back. That's important um, so that in the future you know what it is and why it was important. Using Nuvo Drops, I'm now going to finish off the flowers by putting in the centers and adding the extra decorative dots to just pop the little clusters so that they stand there. So there you go. There's my page. I have my... Um, elements of the requirement for the competition. I have my grid and I have another grid here with my entire. I've used shades of blue and here's my doily from the pack and so that's my total. 